say the Book of the Dead influenced Jewish and Christian scripture. Ancient Christianity owes a great deal to ancient Egypt for its concept of heaven. This makes sense because most of the early Christian fathers were native Egyptians. And so when documents were being written concerning the nature and substance of the afterlife, since these things were not originally written in the Bible, the ancient Egyptians sort of filled in the blanks. The idea of spending one's afterlife with your loved ones in a pleasant place where you can do what you like is the same in both Christianity and in ancient Egyptian religion. There's even a case to be made that the Egyptian Book of the Dead influenced New Testament and Christian religious imagery. It's very clear when we study the history of the New Testament that, in fact, their main competition for the religion of Jesus was the religion of Isis and Osiris and their child, Horus. Many of the early figurations of the Virgin Mary sitting with baby Jesus on her lap are actually based on Isis statues, where Isis is holding Pharaoh, now her symbolic son. One of the first people to notice the connection between the Book of the Dead and the Bible was Wallace Fudge. The fact remains the Egyptians did believe in one God, Osiris, who had lived upon the earth, had suffered a cruel death, and had risen from the dead. There is no doubt that certain views and religious ideas of Christian sects may be traced directly to the Egyptians. It's interesting to see how people's ethical beliefs, religious beliefs, no matter where they are from, or what century they were sort of written in, all have a great deal in common. Now that's Wallace Budge, talking about your African ancestral history. Now let's break it down. On this relief, brothers and sisters, you can see many concepts where they came in, as I said, like scavengers, and picked different pieces. On this particular relief, you can see where the Western world, through Judaism, took a piece of a concept of the creation story from. You can see where the Greek philosophers took a concept of Greek philosophy from. And you can also see where Christianity took a concept, European Christianity took a concept from. So let's break it down. Again, carved in stone on the temple of Aset, right here on the island of Philae. It is here. It tells where the Western world literally came like scavengers and took various scenes to make up the Western world. And one of those scenes is we see that Hermes Trismegistus and Greece, Greek mythology, they literally took it from Tahuti. It is here that our ancestors had a study from the 42 books of Tahuti, representing science, Law and intelligence, who was represented as the Ibis bird that you saw. We saw those little white birds that we saw come yeah. over here. So our ancestors looked at nature. We didn't worship the bird. Yeah. It was an attribute of science, attribute of intelligence. To Hootie writing down the deeds of our life on earth as we lived here. This is where the Western philosophical thought Greeks took their concept of Hermitrius and Eastus from Tahuti, now called thought too. So we see uh, Judaism took. Uh, God Kanun fashioning man out of clay and called him Jehovah. Notice the God Kanun fashioning man on the potter's wheel out of clay. This is where Judaism took a portion of this to make up their Genesis story with the Sanhedrins around 250 B.C. From this relief right here of God fashioning man and woman on the potter's wheel. And they took other concepts of atom from Heliopolis creation story or the city of On to make up their Adam as a man when actually it was Atom the sun. And we see European Christianity took from the goddess Isis and Horus and made up the European, again, let me express the European version of Mary and Jesus. Copied directly from these re reliefs right here. So you got Greek philosophy where it took from Tahuti and called it Hermes Trismegistus. You got the, the Jehovah uh, Genesis creation story and the Bible where they uh, took from Canoon fashioning man on the potter's wheel out of clay. And they turned it into making man out of clay, Adam out of clay. And you also got Christianity right here showing Isis uh, uh, lactating or breastfeeding the holy child Horus who was born of a conception and virgin birth. 
three concepts just from this one relief. You see, all carved in stone. As you can see the line, one dark, one light showing this temple was under the water. Mm -hmm. Nobody could come back and read this. And that's why over here, if you look against this wall right here, much of it, they try to chisel it all out. But our ancestors wrote endlessly as though one day we would forget our story. One day we would not know who we are. One day that the only thing that we would we, we put on our genetic memory bank would be an alien, a conqueror's story. In our mind, our story would not be told. And that's why Justinian in the 6th century AD came in and closed these temples down. Because they were copying Christianity, the theological concepts from African people. And we'll get more into that during the lecture when we uh, uh, have the lecture series this afternoon. I want to even go further to show you sisters that y'all saved me. You are goddesses. And that's, that's the problem with the brother today. Because they took that concept out of his consciousness. That's why the, the rap groups around there calling her the bees and stuff. Yeah. Huh? Okay, now look. Isis holding the Ark of Life. We know what the Ark of Life now is a symbol of her uterus, right? So here, again, I'll show you, showing where the Holy Child is coming from her womb. See the loop? That's why she's holding it, because she wants the first immaculate conception of the first holy birth. is going to come from her. So she's holding the Ark for life. Can you see it? Not too much glare there, right? That's why, that's why the Europeans, when Justinian and the boys Theodosius, they came in, they tried to chisel it out. Couldn't deal with the real Immaculate Conception, but they weren't talking about one Immaculate Conception. Our ancestors were telling us on these release that every woman could produce an Immaculate Conception, provided that she was on the spiritual level and the man was on the spiritual level. The both of them coming together produced Immaculate Virgin Birth, which means a clean birth. But notice they chiseled out the off the top part of it because that represents the womb. But the other part they kept there to represent the crucifix. You see, that symbol that they didn't take or didn't chisel out was a symbol of the cross. They didn't chisel that one out. So this is another picture of Constantine, Constantine's vision of the cross, which he is playing to this symbol, Sec Vincius. In this symbol, we shall conquer. Through this symbol, we shall conquer. Supposedly, Constantine got the cross out on the battlefield. Another picture but now that we know that Constantine came here, now we know where, in fact, Constantine got the cross from. Huh? Right off of your ancestor uh, uh, temples. Has nothing to do with, uh, this is blowing here, has nothing to do with no uh, crucifixion or human sacrifice. Europeans corrupted it. Now we have no understanding or meaning of what the cross means today. And chisel out the ankh, which is a symbol for life. Wow, that is so deep. Every person on earth should look at this and look at their religion now because they stole it completely off a wall. That's crazy. Knowledge is power, man. Y'all need to do some research.